Hi, my name is Ray Hartley. I'm the owner of Intrepid Wildlife Services and welcome to our informative raccoon video. These guys are one of my favorites, you know, the mask bandit. These animals eat just about anything. I mean, they're dumpster divers, they're grub eaters, they will eat shellfish, they'll eat crayfish, they'll eat any kind of fish, they'll just about eat any fruit, um, acorns, all kinds of things. So they're very diverse. They breed during the winter, early, early spring. Generally in March, April is really heavy with young raccoons. The litter size for raccoons can be, you know, basically three to five animals. When a female sets up to have a den location where she's going to give birth to her young, it's generally a really quiet area, some place that she feels very comfortable. Uh, being away from any type of predators. Uh, generally in the wild the raccoon would uh, have a nest in a hollow tree or a hollow log or under a big rock pile or something of that nature. But in an urban situation or suburban situation um, they will tend to use structures whether it's a shed, a crawl space, um, or attics or actually get down into the walls of houses and have their young within the wall structure of a building, especially older homes. It's always the things I can't see that scare me. The animals, sure, they can, you know, bite you and cause harm to you. But the biggest thing I'm afraid of is the unknown. And the unknown with these animals are zoonotic diseases. Uh, and I'm just going over two of them right now. And the biggest one we're worried about is rabies. If there's been a person exposed by either having a contact with a domestic animal like a dog that got in a fight with the raccoon and then was brought into the house, that's a secondary exposure. We want to capture that animal and have that raccoon tested for rabies to ensure that there isn't um, a transmission of rabies to the human. Sometimes people will call us and say they're, they're seeing raccoons but it, and during the day, but sometimes it's just because it's really hot and they're lofting in the tree, you know, hanging out where it's, where it's a little bit of a breeze. That doesn't necessarily mean that animal's sick. But when you see these nocturnal animals out in your yard during the day, you just, you need to be sure. When an animal like a raccoon ends up getting rabies, they can show different behavior. One behavior that may be observed is uh, more lackadaisical. They'll walk around and kind of look like they're drunk. And other times, they may be very aggressive. And obviously, if you were bit by a rabid raccoon um, and you weren't treated, the end is death. Raccoon roundworm is basically a parasite that gets into the digestive system in the raccoon and is shed in the fecal material. It would have to be ingested, unknowingly, of course. But raccoon roundworm, once it's into the body, can cause major issues with organs and actually get into uh, part of the eyes. There have been several cases uh, through the years where children have had uh, issues with it and um, unfortunately we've, we've had children that are blind because of raccoon roundworms. Somebody once told me a 20 pound raccoon as strong as a 150 pound man. I don't know if that's true or not. I do know that I've seen things that are destroyed from these animals. Those little primate hands that they have are capable of grabbing a hold of objects and they pull and pull and they have teeth so they'll chew at things. So they'll pull apart some of the wood or plastic um, vinyl siding and things like that to gain access into a home, usually through a vent. But we have seen where raccoons have ripped apart part of the shingles on a roof and started to tear away at the actual plywood sheathing. They will rip off roof fence, they will uh, damage uh, insulation, you'll get a substantial amount of fecal material accumulating in attics of soiled insulation, and being as strong as they are, they can get into just about anything that they are determined to get into. Where we find the entry points are typically something to do with ventilation of the home either a gable vent or something of that nature. A lot of times we'll see obvious damage where a piece of wood is pulled away from the house or something is destroyed that has gained ac they've gained access through. Uh, we'll also see a lot of paw prints and tracks and things like that over in that area um, from the animals climbing in and out with dirty paws. 
A lot of times we also deal with a lot of raccoons that are on the ground level. They go underneath a deck and get into a, a crawl space area of a home. Removal of these raccoons, once we've done a site assessment, we've determined how these animals have gained access into your home or your business. We would set up specific traps for them, um, specific meaning in certain circumstances we may use a baited live trap and other situations we have specialty traps that are placed over the entry exit points that the animals are using. Our prevention can be a full spectrum of different types of uh, prevention measures depending on that specific need. Obviously with a chimney uh, being open and a raccoon using a chimney to raise young and stuff, we would offer a stainless steel chimney caps to prevent the animals from using your chimney again. If we have gable vents and things like that, we would make custom vent covers that would go over those vents that allow the air to circulate, but it would be animal proof when we're done. Um, we also have done a lot of customized uh, screening over window wells and things like that, and we do some prevention on decks and porches. We get calls from people who say that they have a raccoon issue where it's getting into the garbage. Um, garbage cans, obviously, if they're not secured, these animals will get into that. We recommend that, you know, if you can secure the lids properly with a ratchet strap system or something like that, or to place these garbage cans in a enclosed building. We have had several calls and removal jobs where people have actually had raccoons come through cat and dog doors and got into the kitchen and are eating the dog's food or the cat's food inside the house. So a little bit of prevention and uh, picking up the food outside certainly and anything you could do to prevent uh, the doors from being open during nighttime that would allow a raccoon to enter your home through. Thank you for watching our informative video on raccoon removal. Please subscribe to us and stay tuned for our next video. Thank you.